The Honourable Member from Edmonton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise on the main estimates. For me, it's one of my favourite parts of being uh, an MP in Ottawa, is the estimates process. Some MPs have other uh, priorities uh, when they're in Ottawa, such as, you know, speaking endlessly in the House, like my friend from uh, Winnipeg North, or perhaps taking the family on the uh, taxpayer's dime to Quebec. But for me, it's the estimates. Now, King Edward, when calling the, uh, the model parliament, 1295, kind of start, started the original estimates process. He stated, what touches all should be approved by all, and it is also clear that common dangers should be met with measures agreed upon in common. Now, I state that King Edward was the first estimates geek, and I'm very pleased to follow in that tradition. He put forward a plan basically asking a re our re sorry, asking permission to spend taxpayers' money. Now, at the time, it was to go to war with the Scots and the French, which may or may not be great ideas, but he at least brought forward the plan to start seeking permission from common people before spending their money. Today's estimates process is the modern equivalent. It's broken down by four parts. There's the government expenditure plan, the main estimates, the departmental plans, which lay out the government's priorities for the money that they're asking for, and of course the departmental results, which measures the results after the money is spent. The departmental plans, as I mentioned, is, lays out the justifications for all the money is spent. As mentioned, the results are obviously what they actually achieved, or with this government, what they haven't achieved with the money spent. The most recent year that we have departmental results for shows that this government failed to achieve 49.7% of their targets. And you think of the rapid growth in spending by this government, and yet they failed 50% of the time. But that's a big improvement for this government over two years ago when they failed 51% of the time. Now I want to go over some of the departmental results and some of the plans from this government and what they're seeking in the estimates this year. Public safety, for example, is seeking $1.6 billion. The departmental results show that the last year they achieved 46% of their targets, which makes you wonder how they can come and justify asking for continual money from the taxpayers when they failed Canadians so badly. Some of the examples, the percentage of population thinks the government of Canada respects individual rights and freedoms. They set a goal of 70%, only 46% Canadians. Percentage of partners who believe that Public Safety Canada provides effective policy leadership in operational coordination and national security. We're in a foreign interference crisis right now. They missed by about 40%. And as I mentioned earlier, police reported crime rate per 100,000 population they had it at 5,200 per 100,000 and actually came in at 6,600, 27% higher. So again, part of the process of the estimates, the government comes, presents the departmental plans, says this is what we're going to do with the money, that we, uh, taxpayers' money that we're spending, but it's clear the government is failing. Indigenous services, $21 billion they're asking in the estimates. The results for last year? 16.9% achieved. If you think of the crisis and the issues that we have looking after the Indigenous, 16.9% that they achieved of their goals, a failure rate well above 80%. A couple examples, percentage of First Nations housing that is adequate as assessed and reported annually by First Nations. Target of 70%, the result? from the government, unspecified. They don't even know the result of their spending. Percentage of recommended number of sampling weeks of public water systems in First Nations communities were monitored for bacteria. They missed their goal by 11%. Percentage of culture and recreation assets inspected in the last three years with the greater than fair condition rating. The goal was 55%. They achieved 39%. Oh, but guess what? The government paid out 94% of the executives and managers bonuses. 3.65 million in bonuses 
for an 83.1% failure rate. Public safety, which I mentioned, paid out 92% of their executives to fail over 50%. The CRA, $17 billion, failed 51% of their targets. Now keep in mind, this is the same CRA that the Auditor General noted failed so badly in oversight of pandemic benefits, they paid out $27 billion of taxpayers' money to ineligible businesses. Think of that $27 billion. We have the government doing a tax grab right now and the capital gains that's going to cripple small businesses and farmers to raise $20 billion over four years. And here we have $27 billion paid out to large businesses, large corporations that were, ineligi that were, not, inel or were not eligible. Other failures, complainants working are with, uh, answered within five business days of receipt of their complaint. 95% target, just 61% achieved. Percentage of taxpayer service complaints, CRA resolved within one month. Target at least 80%, result 37%. I know every MP in this building, their constituent office is overrun with complaints that you yep. cannot get through to the CRA. Yep. But that's okay, the government paid out 98% of their executives with bonuses for this failure. Percentage of low com complexity objections resolved within 180 calendar days. Target 85%, achieve 39. National defense, 31 billion in spending. Departmental results met 27.8%. Percentage of force elements that are ready for operations in accordance with targets. Target was 100%. Great. Result 61%. This one is staggering. Percentage of personal, or personal victims of discrimination. <coughs> they actually set a goal. Instead of you think of be zero tolerance for discrimination. They set a goal to have 9% of their staff to be discriminated against. <laughs> but this... <laughs> They managed to achieve 15.7 percent. 15 percent. Wow. So that's about 15 percent. It's about one out of every eight people within D&D &D felt they were discriminated against. But here are the Liberals paying out 91 percent of the executives in D&E &E got bonuses. For any of you who have worked in the private sector, you would know for harassment, you do not set a goal of having at least 9 percent of your staff harassed. You set zero. It may be impossible to achieve 0%, but you don't set a goal of having one out of every 11 of your employees discriminated against, and then pay out 91% of your executives for, for achieving that. But that's this Liberal government. ESDC employment, 98 billion, failed 51% of their targets. Percentage of travel documents and other passport services processed within standards, they missed by 22%. Percentage of in-person passport applications made processed within 20 days, <coughs> missed by 36%. Percentage of passport applications made by mail processed within 20 business days, missed by 7%. However, the percentage of other Randys who received illicit government contracts, 100%. <laughs> They got 93.3, oh, the executives got 93.3% bonuses paid out. Health Canada, almost $9 billion, failed 51% of the time. Percentage of domestic consumer product recalls communicated to Canadians in a timely manner, at least 90%, results 71%, which means 30% of recalls for, that are related to health, the government does not communicate in a timely manner. In this stage of the internet, you think they could just post it on Twitter. But that's too much for this government, but not too much to pay 95% of the executives bonuses. I see I'm running out of time. I'll just touch very quickly on one of my favorites, Environment Canada. 2.7 billion, this of course, uh, government uh, failed 60% of the time, although they almost achieved 100% cover-up rate for the carbon tax costs. Now, this department was exposed by the Auditor General for making up fantasy numbers for their net zero projections for hydrogen projections. So what do they do? 94% of the executive paid out. Plenty more reasons why this, I will not be supporting the main estimates. 
paying out bonuses for failure is not the way to go. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Here, here. Questions and comments? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Transport. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm going to ask this question again because, unfortunately, the member didn't answer it earlier. Uh, $1.6 billion investment for the City of Port Coburn and the region of Niagara. Uh, Asahi Kasai is uh, going to come in and create almost 1,000 jobs. Uh, the budget does contain incentives. Uh, it also it contains uh, monies for secondary planning to satisfy infrastructure requirements. With that said, a no vote by the Conservatives for the 2024 budget is a non-support by the Conservatives for this project. Once again, yes or no, are the Conservatives prepared to support this budget and therefore prepared to, to support the City of Pearl Coburn and the company, Asai Kasai, that's going to come in and invest $1.6 billion into the community? The Honourable Member for Edmonton West. I'm glad uh, the Power Sector for Transport Canada got up because it gives me a chance to comment about Transport Canada. 97.8% of their executives got bonuses. Oh ICAO, which, oh ICAO, which is the, na or the international body that oversees safety at our airports and transport safety, wow. has ranked Canada below Somalia for safety of the airports. We used to have the highest in the world. We now, under this member's leadership, actually have airport safety lower than Somalia, but they pay out 97% bonuses. That is this Liberal government at work. Order. I want to remind members they have an opportunity to ask questions. And so if they have other things to add, they should wait. And I want the, to uh, ask the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to withdraw the comment that he uh, just said to, about the Honourable Member. The last, the last word that you said. Perfect. Thank you. Although I don't think you heard it. I did. Questions et commentaires, questions and comments. Honourable Député Shefford. The Honourable Member for Shefford. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, my colleague uh, for his speech. Obviously, you have to be very good at managing public uh, funds. And I have a question. We know about the scandal with uh, external contractors and the McKinsey firm particularly. In committee, we learned that uh, there is more money being spent on public, the public service, and so you think you'd be able to find the expertise in-house, but despite that, there is more reliance on outside firms. So my question, Madam Speaker, is uh, that uh, when we ask why that is, we're told that there is no expertise in-house. The Honourable Member for Edmonton West. Question. One of the items brought up in the Auditor General's uh, study on the McKinsey, and one of the concerns she brought forward is that the government had actually trained public sector employees to do a certain task, and then ignored those trained employees to go out and sole source a contract to McKinsey. The system under this government is clearly broken, whether it's paying off McKinsey, their friends at Deloitte or KPMG, at the same time ignoring the talent in-house. It's silly, and it should stop. The government should do a full review on every penny spent given out to uh, these management contractors. Instead of shoveling out taxpayers' dollars, they should be looking at serving taxpayers and not their friends at McKinsey. I appreciated the member's question earlier. Uh, when a Liberal MP failed to ask about uh, indig or talk about Indigenous housing. Uh, but I do want to uh, talk about taxation. Uh, so, for example, rich oil and gas CEOs uh, are um, getting richer. Uh, many of the oil and gas companies are exempt uh, from carbon uh, tax. And, for example, Suncor... Uh, only pays one fourteenth of what uh, of the carbon tax compared to Canadians, and I wonder if the member agrees that uh, 
uh, oil and gas companies like Suncor should be taxed so that we can make sure that those kinds of investments coming into the uh, general revenue could go towards projects like the Kivadaluk Hydro Fiber Link project, uh, which would help uh, get Nunavut communities get off of uh, dirty diesel. The armor for Edmonton West, a brief answer, please. Yeah. The government wastes so much money. There's very easy that we could look after the project that the member, the needed project that the member mentions, whether it's cutting back government money to Liberal friends at McKinsey or the Green Slush Fund, or as the Elder General noted, $7.8 billion for green, uh, for green projects to corporations that were not eligible and didn't qualify but got the money anyways. We have projects that need to be looked after and if the government could manage their uh, house better, we could certainly find the resources to cover the project that the member mentioned.